Alright guys, this is a long plane review for Operation Gunship on the Amstrad CPC-464 by Codemaster Software, released in 1989. And I had an email early this week from one of the Oliver Twins asking me to do uh, a long play and review this video. And who am I to say no to the famous Oliver Twins, as you can see in the box art here, which is typically Codemaster style. Um, so yeah, um, here here it is. Um, started work on this. Um, took me a day or two to do. Well, to get good at it and beat it in one go. There's basically five levels to the game, and uh, it plays a bit like a cross between Choplifter and Desert Strike. Well, Desert Strike was released in 1992. Choplifter in 1982, but that was a side-on thing. This is a overhead view, um, helicopter, gunship, sort of, sort of. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to call it a simulator. I know co-masters like to call them simulators, but yeah, you fly over an island, destroying everything in sight, uh, rescuing hostages. There's eight hostages in total and five islands. And it presents a good challenge. As you can see, the long plate has taken me roughly between 40 to 50 minutes. But yeah, this is a, a really good game from the Oliver Twins. Um, we saw some credits on the title screen there. Graphics by uh, Neil Adamson. He did lots for uh, Codemasters. Uh, music and sound effects by the always excellent David Whittaker. You can hear his music now. Um, we'll let it play out to the end. And at the end of the video, you can hear it without me jabbering over the top of it. Yeah, and uh, we'll start this uh, shortly. Here we go, on the uh, first island. Oh, there's lots, of, lots to destroy, lots of explosions. I've got boats and uh, turrets, pillboxes, whatever. And there's helicopters and planes. We'll probably see them uh, in one of the later islands. Boats always attacking you. Watch out for the homing missiles. Um, but yeah, just basically destroy everything inside. And we'll come across a hostage hopefully shortly. Oh, there's a hostage. There's what there he is, waving his arms in the air. And you've got to hover over the top of him. You can see there it says lowering ladder to prisoner. Keep still while the man climbs the ladder. And you rescued him. You've got to do that for seven more prisoners. And then drop them off at your base. Uh, if you run out of ammunition. Um, you can go back to the base and restock your ammo. But you cannot... Excuse me there, it's my phone going off. But you cannot refuel though, so watch out, you can't take forever. So you've got to move quickly. And there we go, it can be quite hard sometimes stopping your helicopter. <laughs> That's one of the niggles in the game, especially when you want to get it to stay still. And if you take off before the, the guy's got in your helicopter, he'll just like fall back down, he'll fall off the ladder, but he won't die. But this green thing I'm shooting is a tank base that spawns tanks. Now as we get into the later levels, you you want to be taking out all the um, tank spawns, the helicopter pads. Oh, there's a helicopter pad there, just there. See, it's just spawned a helicopter and the uh, airstrips because um, helicopters, tanks and planes cause you a real nightmare in the game. And the tactic to beat the game, especially on levels 4 and 5, the last two, is to go around and get rid of all those um, helicopter pads, landing strips and tank spawns. First, re uh, restock on your ammo, go back and then go around get rid of the turrets and uh, get the hostages now you've got like a machine gun fires bullets but you've also, you can also drop bombs so you've got your bomb tote on the top left there your ammo for your machine gun and bullets in your top right uh, press space bar to drop your bombs 
and you've got a handy little target in front of your uh, helicopter which is actually really really useful because sometimes uh, because there's so much uh, colourful graphics it can be a little bit hard to make out which direction your helicopter is uh, going in or pointing at but it also shows you how far your bombs will go your bullets can tend to stretch a little bit further um, than the actual target site if you're standing still I believe yeah and uh, yeah uh, also guys if you manage to destroy everything on the island everything that's destroyable is gone uh, you'll get a special destruction bonus at the end and my goal on this long play is to um, complete this of course and, and uh, get the destruction bonus on every island if I didn't do that I might be able to finish this a lot quicker and a lot easier but I never make things easy for myself I like to complete the game to the uh, best as possible nice explosions there and the graphics are really really nice for a budget game certainly um, it's just a little bit of a shame about the sort of the small window um, and also kind of the frame rate as well it doesn't scroll and move about very uh, smoothly as you can tell which is probably why the window is as small as it is but to be fair there is an awful lot going on if you can think if you imagine all the sprites there all the things that can be destroyed um, plus you've got a uh, you've got sprites for your hostages and sprites for uh, enemy helicopters and tanks and things like that and I think everything is always constantly moving around the island uh, even when you're not on that particular bit of the island in the screen so there's a there's a lot of lot of stuff being processed <laughs> uh, we've got all the hostages I'm just double checking we've destroyed everything before we return to the base there it is and I've overshot it well we've got plenty of fuel and uh, yeah fuel gauge on the left hand side armor on the right hand side you get half your armor replenished at the end of a level so bear that in mind especially for the later levels and there's an indicator at the bottom there the green and orange uh, lights for your hostages so your green light once you return to hostage orange light if you pick one up and there we go we've got the special bonus for total destruction <laughs> Good stuff. Um, on to mission two. And it's really nicely presented. I like the little sort of uh, roll down the screen there. And the static we saw on the uh, status bar. As always with the Oliver Twins, they always go the extra mile. I mean, uh, they're always adding like little extra bits. Um, yeah, their title screens are always really nice. Um, often they add in sampled speech. Uh, not in this game. I, I would presume the memory would have been exhausted, and they would have gone bite hunting to find, save, and find a few extra bites to put other things in. But yeah, they always go the extra mile, um, which I really, really, really appreciate because it, it just it just shows me that the programmers really care about their product and you know they're not just banging out a quick game and then they're done with it I think that's also credit to the Codemasters and the Darling Brothers uh, who ran Codemasters they obviously uh, well I think all publishers probably put a little bit of uh, pressure on their programmers to get a project out on time but they never. It, it just occurs to me that they've never seemed to really rush things, um, 
and I think I think they were very kind to the Oliver twins as well. Maybe maybe they will talk about that in their video they're doing at the moment or the next one um, because it seemed to me that like they were just allowed to just get the game done and when it's done is when it's done. Well, Philip and Andrew, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but um, I think it's a good philosophy to have. Um, I mean, I work in the technology industry. Um, with, shall we, I'll just say with computers and programming and stuff like that, and uh, you know, products are rushed out for a deadline for a, no good reason, really. And it still happens in 2015, as it did in the 80s. We all know a lot of uh, games on the Amstrad and the 8-bit systems. In fact, most systems often were rushed to meet deadlines, usually for a, usually for Christmas or similar. Oh, there's um, there's a landing strip there, a runway for the airplanes. Those airplanes are real swine. See that airplane had crashed into me. I lost a huge amount of armor there. And talking of the extra things they've added, um, you've got like kind of the grid reference thing going on around the uh, outside of the plane window, all the numbers and the letters to sort of show you where you are on the island. Um, you know what? Whilst playing the game, you just don't you just don't take notice of it. It's just too. Uh, it's actually a little bit distracting. Oh, I'm just going around in the circle there, trying to avoid those mi uh, homing missiles. A real pain in the arse. I'll come on to them again later. But the grid reference thing, um, a, a couple of bits, a, a couple of times I might get a little bit lost. And I suppose I could have used the grid reference thing to find where I need to be going. But it's no, in the heat of the moment, you just you just don't bother with it. And I think it unnecessarily slows the game down further potentially. But even so, they've added the nice touches like that. Funnily enough, the f the first time I ever played this game, it was a never. I, I didn't own it at the time. I played it on emulator, and some people really, really like this game. And I've actually been requested to do a long play a couple of times. I think. I think my good mate Paul lives in America now. If you're watching this, I, I'm sure you asked uh, asked me to do this one. Uh, and here I am. But the first time I played it on emulator, I don't, I, I didn't get into it. I, and I think it was because it just seemed to be so much going on. And I just assumed like the uh, the island was just like absolutely massive or something. And I just, uh, I don't know. I, I guess I couldn't be bothered. Actually, the islands are actually quite small. Um, and you can get around it. Uh, get, get through the whole island pretty quickly. Um, once I realised that, I was like, ah, okay, this this game is definitely uh, completable, and I'm starting to enjoy it a heck of a lot actually. And I'm kicking myself now for not giving it the time of day or not buying it uh, at the time. It certainly would have been the type of game I would have bought, actually. I love sort of any... As a kid, you know, back in the late 80s, I loved anything you could... You know, things you... Shooting games, blowing stuff up, helicopters, explosions, blah de blah I mean, I spent hours on bloody Thunderblade, and that was rubbish. And this is actually better. It's actually really good fun. And often budget games can be. Because um, they have to be a, perhaps a little bit more simple than a full price game. They just concentrate on the pure game. Um, you know what, I think this is actually one of the better Codemasters releases. Yes, it's got dodgy scrolling and not a brilliant frame rate. Uh, yes, it can be really annoying and frustrating at times, which I'll come on to. Um, but, man, for $2.99 um, and there's just so much packed in for a budget game. And it's certainly different to a lot of the uh, simulators Codemasters pumps out. 
Um, so yeah, r really impressive. Now I've just got like one hostage to find here. As you can see, I've got a r one red light in the middle of the bar, the bar at the bottom there, and there's my last hostage. Took a bit of a battering on the armour. But fuel's halfway, so I got plenty of time. Thankfully, it's right near my base, and we can get onto the uh, third island and level. There they go, all jumping out. Oh, oh, oh! Getting attacked by uh, homing missiles. They are oh, flipping hate the homing missiles in this. They must be coming from boats. I've got a special bonus for total destruction again, yay! But those homing missiles must be coming from boats. I don't think you can stop the boats from spawning. I don't think so. I may be wrong on that. Um, maybe I didn't explore all of the sea and left a couple or something like that. So yes, uh, Oliver Twins, um, do the boats spawn regardless of blowing everything up? I'd be interested to know. It would make life a heck of a lot easier if you could just destroy absolutely uh, all the gun turrets and all the vehicles and all the uh, heli pads and stuff and then just concentrate on finding the hostages. That would certainly be a route to success. And this is kind of what I'm starting to do here now as well. I'm trying to go after purely, yeah, vehicle spawn points and uh, turrets where possible. Perhaps ignoring some of the buildings. But hey, if I'm hovering over one, I might as well fire away. Even so, this level 3 isn't too tough, so I'm going to pick up a few hostages on the way. And I think, ironically, at the end of this level, I get, uh, I, 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 I lo I miss, I'm missing one, and I, and I struggle finding it. I have to fly around for a bit, like an idiot. So apologies for that, when, when we come up to it. Yeah, well, whilst you're picking at hostages, you might as well fire away at stuff. Save you, save you time, save you fuel. So that's actually a bit of a time-saving tip as well. Um, whilst you want to go around blowing everything up as quickly as possible, taking the time to pick up a hostage and just sort of strafing around, uh, destroying everything around you. Because otherwise this is just wasted time. I could have taken out perhaps two buildings whilst uh, picking up that hostage. However, you're very vulnerable though. You're vulnerable to uh, homing missiles. And if you don't get rid of all the uh, bases very quickly, they'll keep spawning more and more vehicles and tanks and planes and uh, helicopters. Um, and it becomes a real nightmare. So it is really crucial from this level onwards to try and get rid of as much of the uh, vehicle spawn points as possible. Maybe some of you notice the sound effects, right? Uh, they are very similar to the sound effects used in Ghostbusters 2. Um, the Oliver's tw Oliver Twins also did the Ghostbusters 2 game full price on the Amstrad and Spectrum. Not a lot of people not a lot of people know they did that uh, or believe they actually did a full price game. <laughs> no offence to them. Uh, but Ghostbusters 2 was freaking excellent. And I think David Whittaker also did the music and sound effects for that, so yeah, some 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 of them are very similar to the effects used on levels two and three in Ghostbusters 2. But there you go. Oh, 
that was usually bombs if your ammo is running low. Yeah, there's so much stuff to be destroyed on, on the islands. Loads and loads of stuff. It's mad all the things are blowing up and thing and yeah, love it. Yeah, I really, really like this game. And I'm kicking myself for not uh, investigating it sooner. So yeah, watch out for uh, homing missiles when you're getting more ammo. You see, there's one, and um, I, I didn't notice it. I didn't notice it through the trees, or, or I just switched off for a second. So yeah, you can you can shoot them out the air. And preserving your armor, um, especially in this level and level four, is really really crucial because you're gonna need it in level five. You're gonna need as much armor as possible, or if possible, a full complement of armor. And you can shoot whilst you're getting ammo, and he doesn't your ammo doesn't stop or uh, go down, which is which is pretty pretty nice. It does take a long time to get a full set of uh, bullets and bombs, though, so mm, you might not want to go for the full set. Um, if you're worried about your fuel going. But this is a really, really nicely balanced game in terms of difficulty. Uh, the first island shouldn't give you too much trouble. Um, and uh, yeah, I do know that the Oliver Twins spend, uh, spend, sp do spend a lot of time playtesting the games. Um, and playing themselves and seeing if they can complete it them themselves. Although I kind of dispute that on Grand Prix Simulator because that was rock hard. That was one of the videos I did recently. Um, also, a request from them. That took some real game playing skills to be. So I'm impressed. But this is this game is definitely completable even for the average gamer. Um, there is a cheat mode if you get stuck. I don't know whether to tell you the cheat mode or not. Um, but the the the, uh, the 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 dump of the game I'm playing in an emulator here actually uh, comes uh, with a built-in cheat mode anyway put in. But I believe um, if you want to activate the in-game cheats, um, I think you have to get a high score and type jet ski with a space in the middle and possibly spaces at the end um, into the high score table and you can press C to jump a level also complete it but the dump on the I'm using which comes from the CPC power website um, has infinity energy fuel bombs and ammo and stuff so you could use a combination of both if you wanted to, I suppose. Yeah, so I think we've destroyed most things on the island. Now, we have just got one more hostage to rescue. And I, I'm searching around the bottom of the island here thinking I'd pick them all up at the top and I hadn't this is me wasting a lot of time and a lot of your time as well I don't like to do edit cuts and long plays at all uh, it is as it is so sorry for wasting your time but yeah he's, he's in the top he's up top left but we've got plenty of fuel we might as well check that we've destroyed everything to get the mission bonus total destruction Bloody homing missiles. There they come again. And I'm starting to panic here thinking, where where's the where's the flipping hostage? I mean the island is not that big. I'm going crazy thinking, have I missed something? Have I missed a building I need to blow up? Ironically I think there is actually a, a building or two left where the uh, hostages wait in. 
And there's the boat that we know was firing homing missiles at us, one of them at least. But yeah, really lovely graphics, really lovely music, really great gameplay uh, at a budget price. Um, this almost could have been a full price game, actually. And that just shows you how good it is. Okay, there you go. Look, there's a couple of buildings, and there's the missing uh, hostage. So I really like this game. I'm going. To, I am going to be giving this a good score. But you'll have to wait to the end of the video for that. But stick around for levels 4 and 5, things do start really heating up. Doesn't appear to, but then uh, there's a lot more uh, enemy vehicle spawn points. And they get a, lot, uh, get a teensy bit more aggressive, I think, potentially. Cool. I don't necessarily actually the, the enemies themselves get more aggressive. I think, I think there's just more of them. So here we are, level four, and we're after destroying, of course, the ve enemy vehicle spawn points. But well, watch out, even the turrets, uh, they shoot out homing missiles occasionally. You definitely want to get rid of these like um, big boats that are stationary. And whilst going round looking for helicopter pads like here, might as well take out a few turrets where possible. Because the uh, the less homing missiles you have going against you, that's a tank spawn there I just killed. Uh, the, so yes, yeah, so less homing missiles coming at you, the better. Because they could be launched from anywhere in the island, and they'll start tracking you down. And suddenly, whilst you're re uh, well restocking on your uh, ammo and stuff, you'll get like loads of the flipping things uh, after you. Okay, that's good progress so far. Not too many hits on the old uh, 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 armour. Perhaps should have used a bomb on that big building. Oh, there's a plane and I flew into it and lost loads of armour. If you want to clear things quickly, Fire your guns as well as dropping bombs. I took too long on that really there. Should have just used a couple of bombs. Job done. Most things get destroyed with one bomb. Others take a couple of bombs worth without any uh, machine gun fire. Yeah, I've got three homing missiles after me. Because the game's so busy, there's so much explosions and things going on. You can actually lose track of like, uh, like oh, actually, I'm getting hit loads of machine gun fire and rockets because you just can't always see them because of like the because oh, it's so colourful. Look, there's like there's like two tanks there. It's hard to make out sometimes. Uh, and rockets that are red going over red buildings and things like that. And before before you know it, suddenly suddenly you've lost a huge amount of armor. So you do have to concentrate. Frankly, it doesn't go too quickly. It's the frame rate. But yeah, really cool game. This is like the middle ground between, uh, as I said at the start of the video, Choplifter in 1982 and Desert Strike in 1992. Who knows, maybe this game inspired the Desert Strike programmers. That was a massive game.
Sort of been quite forgotten about now, though. Well, I do wonder, uh, Oliver Twins, question for you. Was Choplifter an influence uh, for you? If not, what game was? Oh, one thing I, I, I should mention as well, uh, which I do take great pride in doing, and it usually happens with Oliver Twins games, but the uh, this was originally programmed on the Amstrad. This is an Amstrad original game, which was later... Uh, converted to the Spectrum. Uh, Philip uh, Oliver confirmed that for me. Oh yeah, I'm just going around in circles there because I've run out. I've completely run out of ammo and stuff, and I've got loads of homing missiles after me, and I want to save my armor. So yeah, never run out. That golden rule: never completely run out of uh, ammo before getting back to uh, replenish. And break my own rule there in this game, but that's a top tip for you. But yes, Amstrad Original, um, later, well, fairly soon after, ported to the ZX Spectrum, I think by the Oliver Twins themselves. Um, I don't know if this appeared on the Commodore 64 or not. I'm just going to quickly look on the Lemon 64 website. I should have uh, checked that before uh, starting this commentary. Can't find an entry for Operation Gunship on Lemon 64, so I don't think this ever made it to the Commodore. Hmm. There you go guys, this is a bit of an Amstrad and Specky exclusive then, with the original version coming from the Amstrad. Now I've had a, had a good look at the Spectrum version, um, there's quite a few videos of it on YouTube. Um, it looks and plays identically, um, I don't think it plays any faster or any slower, uh, but of course it's all sort of in, well you call it monochrome, but two colours. Um, and is even more difficult to make out so whilst it sort of looks you know in terms of how it's drawn similar and how it plays is identical um, it's not as good as the Amstrad version purely down to the fact that it's a lot harder to make out stuff because it's all pretty much one colour so yeah the Amstrad version wins but the Spectrum version is still brilliant, still a really good game if you're a Specky fan, well worth checking out and playing. So yeah, we're doing really well on uh, Island and Level 4 here. Oh. Yeah, you can reverse. <laughs> One niggle about this game is being able to get your helicopter to a standstill, and because you, it's it's yeah, you can end up going back and forward, back and forward. I, I, am I at a standstill? Am I picking him up or not? And that can get quite frustrating. That is one sort of niggle. But then again, helicopters aren't meant to be uh, easily controlled, you know. <laughs> Not that any of us has uh, probably watching this has ever actually physically flown a helicopter before, but as you can, you know, as you've probably seen in movies and TV and documentaries, they're they're not easy things to fly. And getting them to hover and pull off intricate manoeuvres is not not an easy thing. Well, hover still—that's what I mean. Well, see, that's what um, they're trained to do in the Air Force and Army. So, yeah, sometimes there's a couple of like little little turrets out at sea, a little out the way from the island. Um, in this level, there's a there's actually a hostage in one of them, um, but they're easily easy to miss. Um, Uh, if you're going for that um, total destruction bonus, then you want to be checking for that. Get rid of more bow 
loads. Okay, we've only got two hostages left to rescue, but our fuel is starting to get a little bit low. And I think we'll start hearing a warning alarm shortly. Yeah, there it is. That means your fuel's low. Uh, there's also another sort of warning alarm for when your armor's really low as well, for extra extra noise and to ramp up the tension a little bit. Oh god, I'm trying to get get above him then, stay still. Ah, it's really frustrating sometimes. So that is one quibble, definitely. And I think that should be yeah, that's all the hostages. That should be all the bits I needed to destroy. Just having a check. Might as well. We've got enough fuel to make it. And our armour level is just above halfway, which is really good because, as I said earlier, you get half your armour replenished at the start of the next level. But guys, there is no uh, lives in this game, there are no continues, once your helicopter is destroyed, it's game over. So bear that in mind. But it's, a, it's actually a fairly short game, it's five, there's five levels, plenty to do, and I think if you had lives it would be too easy then. Yeah, special bonus for total destruction again. So, moving, we'll move on to the last island, level five, and island five. Yeah, this is a real swine. Gonna get rid of this. Uh, yeah, the uh, floating uh, airstrip. What do you call them? There, there is a name for them in the military. Oh god, what's the name for them? Oh my god, look at all those turrets there. I'm going to try and get rid of... Oh god, I've got a plane crash into me now. Still can't think of the name for that bloody thing. Floating sh the ship with a... Uh, uh, the landing strip and take off runway. Oh, there's another runway there. Get rid of that. I'm trying to think of Top Gun and things like that. Flipping neck. I think I bought one uh, my uh, young boy like one of them for Christmas a couple of years ago. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, whatever. So yeah, as before, going after enemy spawn points, turrets when we can. Ignoring buildings as you know, if we can, because it's just going to take up ammo, and we want to get rid of as m as much of the danger as possible. As uh, actually, Philip Oliver has said to me in an e in an email. I think they were fans of Gauntlet, and you know, and says like it's the same technique in Gauntlet. You know, get rid of the spawn points in Gauntlet, and then and then uh, concentrate on what's left. That's exactly what you need to do here. God, I've got a couple of helicopters. We've got a, uh, yeah, there's a helipad left, I think, somewhere. There it is. And we've done really, really well on this. Oh, tank. Tank place there, cool, get rid of that. Sometimes it seems to take more hits to destroy than uh, another object of the same type. I don't know. Oh god, we've got a couple of tanks on the loose. 
We'll get rid of him in a second. Yeah, but we've done excellent progress here. Excellent. That should be, should, oh, got hit by three homing missiles then. I wasn't paying attention. I think I got like freaked out there by the fact that there was three, three of them coming at me. Not sure what that little sort of space alien thing is supposed to be though. It looks like a little spacer. It looks like a space invader. That oh, silvery thing with the pointy ears. It like. I'm not quite sure what that's meant to be. Now there's a tank spawn point there I've just missed. But then again I am so low on ammo that I'm just gonna I'm just gonna chill and replenish. building next to me I can destroy there yes I'll get rid of the boats hopefully they're within range and we can destroy them awesome and uh, just keep an eye out for the homing missiles and one thing I've noticed actually if your helicopters angled at a certain angle <laughs> um, your ammo seems to replenish a little bit quicker than if you're sort of facing completely 90 degrees to the right. Hmm. That's a, it's a strange little thing. And that's why I'm pointing a certain way each time. As you can see it sort of slows down when you sort of either pointing uh, up down or left or right uh, at uh, 90 degrees or 180 degrees or 270 or whatever or 360 <laughs> but when, when you're at a little angle it seems to go a little bit quicker maybe the Oliver Twins can explain that as well for me I'm sure they might comment on the video in the comments at some point But yes, guys, uh, you know, the main purpose of this video, I mean, I, I, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a game that I probably would have wanted to do a long play um, at some point. Um, there's actually loads of others I really, really want to get done, and this has sidetracked me. But yeah, the point of this video was, to get it, get it done now, was for the Oliver Twins, uh, go and check out their channel. Um, quite easy to find, just put Oliver Twins in the search box in YouTube, and they'll come top. And they've been doing lots of uh, Let's Play videos, giving lots of great detail, history, information behind the game, how it was made, why, etc. Really, really interesting stuff. Um, they could do with a, a, a bit more, a uh, few more subscribers and views, uh, considering like you know, um, their get the, the hit, you know their place in gaming history and the work they're putting into those videos. Um, as as like their games, they're putting a lot of time and effort into making them, and they're just not they're not quick and cheap videos. They're they're really well done actually, and they've added in lots and lots of useful and interesting information. So yeah, guys, go and subscribe to the uh, Oliver Twins YouTube channel, and if you haven't to me, subscribe to me too, please. Thank you. Yeah, now it's time to start ra uh, rounding up the hostages. Oh yeah, there's a cheeky little turret out in the ocean here to destroy. Easily forgotten about and missed. Just to help me out a little bit actually doing this long play, I'm going to be honest with you, uh, on the World of Spectrum website, which is like the game based site for the ZX Spectrum, um, someone's actually made a map of all the islands from screenshots and uh, yeah that kind of really helped me out. But once you get familiar with the islands, once you've played it a few times, you you won't need the map. Uh oh, running out of fuel. And armor's getting low. And but yeah, you get you get used to actually dodging those homing missiles. Usually sort of turning in a circle, slowing down, speeding up, the usual stuff. 
I'll get you out of trouble. Now we've got a couple of uh, oh god, missed missed a turret there. Uh, yeah, it, this is going to be really tight. Uh, getting everything destroyed and all the hostages. Because remember, guys, once we get back to our base, we've got to like, get them uh, offloaded as well. And the fuel's getting really low. As is our bullets. Things are getting tense. <laughs> And we've still got another prisoner, prisoner and hostage to pick up as well. And he's going to be right at the top, where all those like loads of turrets were out in the ocean. But thankfully, it's right nearby our base. So, uh, oh, typical, there's a flipping boat there, and a homing missile. I like the little noise of like you can hear him climbing up the ladder, I forgot to mention that. That's a nice little touch, but I think we're just just gonna do it. And that's really tough on the final level to get everything destroyed and back to your helicopter base with all the hostages off. There goes the green light, two more, one more. Yay! And special bonus for total destruction. <laughs> so do we get an ending? Yes we do! The simple one, text ending, but hey, at least there's one. Congratulations, you've successfully completed all five levels of Operation Gunship. We hope you have enjoyed our game. Yes we have. Well yes I have. I really enjoyed playing that actually and I'm not just saying that because well the Oliver Twins asked me to do this video. Um, in the end I more than happily did it. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to give this game, also based on the fact that it's a budget game as well, uh, you'd pay £2.99 for it probably back in 1989. I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. So thanks for watching guys, just going to enter my high score here and then I'll let the music play out for a bit. Thanks guys, subscribe, leave a comment and also go and check out the Oliver Twins YouTube channel too as well. And look out for their own Operation Gunship video, I think it's going to be uploaded at the weekend. Thanks for watching guys, take care, goodbye, bye.